Welcome back to another episode of Organic Chemistry. Today we're going to rank the acids. So the rule for today is that these acids have to be relatively common and we're going to be considering many factors such as the utility of an acid, the strength of an acid, as well as some practical considerations such as whether or not you want to use it, possible concerns with it, etc. So let's begin. While the strongest acids you might think automatically mean that they're the best might not necessarily be the biggest consideration here because there's a lot of factors to consider. Why don't we start with one like hydrogen iodide? Hydrogen iodide is great for the cleavage of ethers, but the issue with hydrogen iodide is basically if you ever have that, people are just assume you're making meth. So hydrogen iodide can go right to F tier. Now let's look at one like acetic acid. Acetic acid is pretty good. It's also like, you know, salad dressing that's pretty decent. You know, on its own it's not that great, but in some like balsamic, delicious, right? So it can be a good solvent on its own. It can be kind of annoying to get rid of, and it's not that strong of an acid. So, I mean, best case scenario, probably like C tier. Now, we have a lot to go through, so I will try and not stay on one for too long. Let's look at another one like triflic acid. So, triflic acid is a smoking good acid, like super duper strong acid. Now, the problem is they send it to you in an ampule, and it'll chew through basically anything but Teflon. Like, normal hydrocarbons just, like, get totally annihilated. But it's a really good acid. It can make chemistry happen. So, I'm going to put it in B tier because it's kind of a, a pain in the butt to handle, but it's pretty good. HBF4 is like a better version of triflic acid because it's similarly strong, but it's available in ether. So you can like handle it and it's okay. HBF4 is a little bit annoying because it could potentially like react and do some stuff you don't want it to do, but it's better than triflic acid. So I'm probably going to put it in A tier, but maybe it belongs in S tier. Now, phosphoric acid is present in soda, S tier. Boronic acid, phenyl boronic acid. Normally you think of these as just like coupling partners for reactions like Suzuki reactions. If you want to make carbon-carbon bonds, uh, related palladium chemistry can be done as well. But you can actually use these as hydrogen bond directed, uh, like you can use these as like hydrogen bond directing catalysts. And you can also do some neat radical chemistry. There was a recent paper out of the Macmillan group using boronic acids and uh, decatungstate. So boronic acid's pretty cool, underutilized. So I'm going to put it in A tier. Now, Methane sulfonic acid, in principle, it's really useful. We've had a bottle of it in our lab for quite a long time, but I don't know of anyone ever using it. Maybe it's more useful for medchem. It's kind of like a, a suckier version of triflic acid, except it's better because you can handle it. I'm going to put it in B tier because while it's a little bit lamer than uh, trifluoromethane sulfonic acid, it's, you know, it's at least easier to handle. Uh, PTSOH, peritoluol sulfonic acid, S tier. The only thing it doesn't have going for it is if you try and isolate it in its pure form without any water, it'll actually just like decompose. But other than that, great reagent. Now a similar reagent is the polymer supported version of that. And so this is polystyrene sulfonic acid. So this is really useful. You can have this on like a bead so that you can just like filter them out of your reaction after. And if some of your activity is lost, you can like protonate it and make it more activated. So this is super useful, especially in industrial applications. Sulfuric acid. It can clean drains. It can do all sorts of chemistry, but it'll also convert stuff to tar. Now, that being said, it's probably like the acid of choice of alchemists. So I'd probably, you know, have ghosts coming after me if I didn't put it in S tier. Plus there's a sulfur, so it's S tier. Now, HBr. HBr is also good for ether cleavage, but you don't see it used too frequently. Uh, because it's kind of niche, I'm going to put it in E tier. Now some other neat ones, so this is saccharin. Saccharin is an artificial sweetener, but it's also a relatively strong acid. This has a pKa of about 1.5, so decently strong acid. You can make some cool derivatives of these to do chemistry. On its own, it kind of sucks, so this might take away from its overall utility. I'm gonna put it in D tier. Um, and compared to sugar, it tastes about B. If sugar is an S, saccharin is gonna be a D. Now oxalic acid, you might not think of as like that useful of an acid, but it can actually be used to prepare salts and it can catalyze some acid mediated transformations that you normally do with sulfonic acids, such as sulfuric acid or peritoluol sulfonic acid. So oxalic acid is pretty cool. Now, if you have like, if you consume large amounts of oxalic acid, you can get calcium oxalates, which are like kidney stones. So that's not great. So I'm gonna put it in E tier. Now, uh, succinamide, you might not think of succinamide as that good of an acid, but I think this has a pKa of around 4. This is useful because you can make derivatives of it, such as enbromosuccinamide, or if you needed just a really weak acid to mediate a transformation, you might be able to use succinamide. But it's fairly niche, we're going to put it in D tier with saccharin. Okay, fluorosulfuric acid, terrifying. Way too strong of an acid. Why, why did we even make this? What the heck? A tier, because it's a little bit terrifying. Benzoic acid. 
Uh, benzoic acid's pretty awesome. I mean, you can't do too much other than make esters from it. It's but it's like got a place in everyone's heart, right? If I was mean to benzoic acid, you guys would never let me hear the end of it. So I'm gonna put it in A tier just to suppress the hatred in the comments. Ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride's great. So ammonium chloride, you can quench certain reactions. Instead of using HCl to quench them, you can use ammonium chloride. It's pretty chill. You can just, you know, make a solution of this, keep it on the bench. It's never going to go bad. Ammonium chloride is S tier. HCl is also S tier. Um, H HCl is just a strong acid. You know, I'm talking about like conch HCl here. It's a little bit scary because, you know, it's pretty strong. But, you know, we've been using HCl for so long. It's, it's a great, great acid. HF, yikes. HF goes to F tier. You know why? Because there's fluorine in it. And it's terrifying to work with. I've worked with 70% HF and pyridine. And it's terrifying. You can feel the texture on your gloves change just from the HF vapor doing chemistry to the surface of it. Now, HF industrially is really useful because you can mediate the alkylation of airings with it. So you can, um, you know, make different derivatives that you wouldn't normally be able to do without a strong acid like HF. But, you know, there's been hazards associated with that and people dying. Um, you know, people do sketchy things like dissolve bodies in HF. You see that in Breaking Bad. Um, it, it could be useful for deprotecting stuff. If you have like a silane in a functional silane functional group in a molecule, you need to deprotect. Uh, but no one really wants to work with it. You just have to work with it. I don't know anyone who's keen to work with HF, and I've met a lot of fluorine chemists. So HF, F tier. Squaric acid. Squaric acid is kind of cool. If you haven't seen squaric acid before, this is what it looks like. You can also have squaramides, which are like this, but with NH2s. They are decently strong acids, and you can mediate some cool hydrogen bonding uh, catalysis with these. With the squaramide derivatives, you can also make uh, interesting uh, derivatives that are like chiral. So squaric acid is kind of cool because it's a square and it's not that useful, but it's not, you know, too, too obscure. I guess we'll put it in D tier with uh, with succinamide and saccharin. Now this one, triflamide. Triflamide is really cool, but it's not commercially available. So if you want to make it uh, or if you want to use it, you have to make it yourself. Now it's pretty awesome. You can make it, you have to do a sublimation to isolate it, but it's pretty cool. It's a strong acid. You can make some good salts from that. And once you have the N minus derivative, it's not that nucleophilic. So I'm going to put triflamide in B tier. Trifluoroacetic acid. Great, great acid. You know, pKa like minus one ish. Super, super useful acid. Easy to get rid of. Useful for HPLC. TFA is definitely A tier. Now, this guy here, this is like the most super acid ever. Okay. This is like so, so strong. SPF6 is no joke. Okay, so SBF6, because it can protonate alkanes, you know, that George Ola kind of chemistry, it's going to go uh, in A tier. It's not practical enough that people can use it most of the time, but it is a special place in everyone's heart. Perchloric acid. It would be really great. It's a strong acid, pretty super acidy, you know. Usually you have to work with 70% or less, because otherwise it can, like, just explode itself. Um, but once you have the counter ion, it's pretty chill, except it could still explode itself. People are terrified about this. A lot of it's kind of like, um, you know, word of mouth passes down. No one really is sure why they're scared, but then someone works with it and everyone's like, oh yeah, that stuff's dangerous. So we'll put perchloric acid in E tier because it's it's tempting, but you know, it's like the it's like the singing sirens. They're going to make you drive your boat into the rocks. So perchloric acid, a little bit spooky. Now I only included this one, which is KHP, potassium uh, phthalic acid or Phthalic acid monopotassium salt, KHP, uh, because the analytical chemist uses this to titrate stuff as a primary standard. It doesn't absorb water. It's not hygroscopic. And uh, you can weigh it out on a scale, so you can get really precise amounts of this. KHP is pretty useful for that reason. I'm going to put it in B tier. Now, citric acid. Citric acid, you know, makes gummy worms taste good. It's pretty awesome. I mean, practically in synthesis, we'd almost never use this unless we were making complexes of transition metals. But because this is an organic chemistry channel, we don't care about that. So we're going to put it in C tier, C for citric. Okay, uh, we have vitamin C. Vitamin C is really great because it's ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid can be a really good reductant, make this into a diketone. You can see this is an interesting enol with two alcohols. Now, this is pretty useful because it's chiral, so you can make interesting derivatives of it. It's useful in biology, so this is the one time we don't hate the biologists here. And so, uh, you know, citric acid's pretty useful. Um, there was an interesting paper recently adding uh, tetrafluoroethyl groups using uh, ascorbic acid. Um, it hasn't been utilized enough in chemistry. I think if this started being used as a more common reductant, this would like be an A or S tier. But because it's vitamin C, it's going to go in C tier. Okay, priotic acid. Priotic acid is useful. It's a strong acid, but you can also cleave uh, diols with it. 
related functional groups like epoxides often go as well. Sometimes you can do dihydroxylations with it, um, but because it has many different structures, it's not necessarily accurate to show it in this form. Because it isn't just like one structure in one form, we can't give it a high tier, because we're not talking about just this one thing, we're talking about several things. So we're going to put it in B tier for that reason. Now, another interesting one would be like hypochlorous acid. So this is what you get if you protonate bleach. Now, if you've ever smelled this, it smells awful. It's like so corrosive and unpleasant. It's not really useful on its own. It's unstable. It wants to decompose into chlorine or into oxygen. So we're going to put this in F tier as well. Sulfamic acid. Probably every lab you've ever worked in has this, but you've probably never looked at it or even considered giving it the time of day. But if you've ever had any dental uh, stuff, like a mouth guard, for instance, the cleaning solutions that they use to descale some of the biofilms and whatnot is actually sulfamic acid. And so uh, sulfamic acid is a useful compound for that reason. Uh, additionally, it's worth noting that uh, it can be used to create some complexes. However, this can be unstable depending on how you store it. So in solution, it can sometimes decompose, but it's still kind of cool. So I'm going to put it in D tier. Okay, water you might not think of as a very good acid, but if you ever have to quench something like Nbuli or LAH, at some step you'll eventually add water to it. Um, I mean, as an acid, it's not that good. It's kind of like middle of the line. So we'll put it in C tier. Hypophosphorus acid. We don't normally use this as an acid exactly. We tend to use it as a reducing agent if it's used. But this is kind of like hydrogen iodide, where if you have this at all, people just assume you're making meth. So it's going to go into F tier. Picric acid. Picric acid is super explosive. It's basically TNT, just with a phenol instead of a methyl group. I mean, you could make picrate salts. This is a good counter ion, but kind of like perchloric acid, it just explodes. So this can go into E tier. Cam4 sulfonic acid, CSA, very popular in medchem and industry. You see this used quite often. Sometimes in total synthesis, you see this. Um, I'm always concerned that this has a ketone and an acid, so it's probably just interacting with itself the whole time. But you can have this as a chiral acid, so sometimes this can be useful. I'm going to put CSA in C tier for CSA. Okay, chromic acid, you can do Jones oxidations. Chromium is really toxic. You don't really want to work with it um, unless you actually have to. Uh, because it's chromium, I'm going to put it in E tier. Now, formic acid. Formic acid is really useful. If you're not familiar with uh, etymology or entomology in this case, formic acid is actually derived from form, which is Latin for ant. So if you uh, were to eat ants, it might taste like formic acid because they have formic acid in them. So there's your etymology and your entomology for today. So formic acids can, can be useful as a reductant. It can also be useful for making formamides such as DMF, so I'm going to put formic acid in B tier. Carbonic acid is great if you have carbonated beverages. We put phosphoric acid in S tier because it's in soda. And I mean, this has to go in S tier for the same reason, S for soda, right? Now, chiral binap derived phosphoric acids. So this weird two naphthalene system, these two massive rings, they're actually so bulky that those hydrogens can't uh, slip past each other. So the ring is stuck in this conformation. And so these have a unique type of chirality. And so the phosphoric acids can often catalyze in antioselective transformations as you'll have a single enantiomer of this phosphoric acid. Now, that being said, these tend to be all hype and very little actual utility, and no one ever wants to synthesize these. And if they're commercially available, they're way too expensive. So they'd be like your last resort. And since they'd be your last resort, I'm putting it in F tier. Nitrous acid, useful for making diazonium salts. Nitrites are also used in meat to get some of that nice red color. Now, nitrous acid is pretty useful. It can also be used to make inorganic, or uh, rather organic nitrites. Um, although it's a little bit spooky because it can start making explosive stuff. But that might be good. So we'll put it in B tier. Now, pivolic acid is kind of like acetic acid. Less commonly used, but you do still see it used occasionally. I'm going to put it in D tier. Boric acid. Boric acid can be used as like an uh, ant killer. So if you have boric acid, um, the, the crystals are a similar size to sugar crystals. So the ants will be like, oh, sweet sugar. And then they'll eat it and their stomachs will explode. And then the ants will eat the dead ant and they'll explode. Now, practically, you don't see boric acid its own use too much in synthesis, but it kills ants. And man, screw ants. So just because it kills ants, we're going to put it in C tier. Finally, we have nitric acid. Nitric acid is legendary. It's the acid that makes explosives. You know, it can oxidize metals very easily. There's just so much cool stuff you can do with nitric acid. So I'm going to put it in A tier. So hopefully you've enjoyed this tier list video. It would really help out the channel if you left and like and subscribed. And I hope you have a great day.